Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thanks for joining us for this latest segment of eWeek eSpeaks, the series in which we interview IT thought leaders in all different sectors of the business. Today's interviewee is Simon Ritter. Simon is the deputy CTO of Azul, A-Z-U-L. Simon, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Tell me a little bit about your background, and you and I talked briefly about our beginnings at Sun Microsystems. Tell me about it. That's right. Yes. In terms of Java, I joined Sun Microsystems way back in February 1996, pretty much about the same time that JDK 1.0 was launched. And I followed Java all the way through Sun. We got acquired by Oracle back in 2010. I then spent another five years at Oracle following Java and doing the same thing. And then after leaving Oracle, I joined Azul and I've been there for nearly five years now. That's great. Tell me about what Azul does, what it produces, what business problem or what IT problem it solves. Well, Azul is a, as a company is focused 100% on Java. We're literally the only company in the world that is only focused on Java. And the idea is behind, the idea behind this is, is to deliver to our customers an alternative in terms of implementations of Java. And that really kind of falls into two areas. We have a product that we call Zulu, which is a build of OpenJDK. So if you're looking for deployments of Java and you want to use it in your data center or on your desktops and laptops, then this is an alternative build. It's fully TCK compliant. So it's a drop-in replacement. No need to do any work in terms of migration or anything like that. The other side of our business is around what we call Zing. This is an alternative implementation of the Java virtual machine. It's designed to be lower latency, higher performance by modifying the way that certain things like garbage collection work and just-in-time compilation. So our business is all about Java. Okay, so developers take note. Java has been an amazing story. It has. It is a survivor. It it, it is uh, it plays. I guess it's not a in a not a pejorative sense, but to the lowest common denominator, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. it really does. And simple is good. You know, um, simple is hard to do. Uh, simple is good. And Java is still everywhere. I mean, I remember. Early on, when, before it was called Java, it was called Oak. And it was originally designed for television because that's what the plan was. And then the internet sort of happened in the early 90s and everything changed and Dr. Gosling and the whole team uh, made, some, made a pivot, so to speak. Uh, and boy, what a pivot. I mean, it's everywhere. It's in every device we have, isn't it? It is. I mean, it, as you say, it's been remarkably successful. Um, we've, we've seen it go through, you know, sort of the, the applet phase at the beginning, which was where suddenly you could put, you know, interactivity into a web page, something, that, you know, we, we absolutely take for granted now. But, you know, for the, those of us who remember, like yourself and myself, uh, you know, static web pages, suddenly having animations and the ability to do things on a web page was a, a real change. And, and then obviously, as you say, it's, it's kind of evolved through various things in terms of embedded devices, in terms of mobile phones, well, not so much now, um, but Blu-ray players and things like that. And it's been incredibly successful in terms of server applications. And now that's kind of led into cloud deployments and, and people running huge websites. If you look at people like Netflix, if you look at people like eBay and, and Amazon and um, pretty much any banking system that you, you're going to interact with nowadays is going to be running Java on the back end. So yes, it's, it's hugely popular, hugely successful. For sure. I remember that Sun was trying to do a Java phone years ago. Were you involved <laughs> yes. in that? <laughs> I, I had a little bit of interaction with that. The one that I did have quite a lot of interaction was, was set-top boxes, because yeah. we did try to push Java TV into set-top boxes. And uh, so I, I got to do some stuff with the BBC and, and various companies like that, which was very interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, so talk to me about Java development right now. What What kinds of you said cloud deployment. You touched on cloud deployment. Is that a huge use case right now or a very common use case for Java developers? Yes, I'd, I'd say that's probably the most common uh, use case that we're seeing at the moment is, is both uh, on-premises cloud and 
in the public cloud where you're using people like Microsoft, people like Google, um, and so on. And I mean, that's one of the areas where, as Azul, we've been very successful because if you look at Microsoft's Azure cloud, they provide Java as part of that deployment platform and they actually came to us and Zulu is what they use in Microsoft Azure. So we, we've been able to deploy that and make that available to them so that their customers get to use that. And we obviously provide all the, the updates and so on for that as and when they're required. How, how have the um, Java development kits, the JDKs improved over the years and what has been added to it uh, in recent years, that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen a, a sort of gradual development of the, the Java platform itself. And that's one of the things that's been really powerful about Java and, and why it's been so successful is simply the way that the, the people who've developed this, so people like James at the beginning, and more recently, people like Mark Reinhold and Brian Gertz, um, who are sort of leading the direction that Java goes in. And what I find is that they've done a very, very good job of, of making changes to the platform that address some of the concerns that developers have and as we develop more modern applications, but without making it so radical in terms of changes that suddenly you know people say, well, it's not the Java that I like, it's not how it used to feel, and so they move away from it. And, and if you look at the sort of more recent things, um, maybe not quite so recent now, but I mean, JDK 8 was a very big release because it brought in the idea of Lambda expressions and streams, which gave you a more functional style of programming. Then more recently, we had JDK 9 that introduced modularity that made life much easier for deployments of applications. But the big change then was also moving to this six month release cadence for the, the JDK itself. So since, what is it, like three and a bit years now, we've had six releases of Java. And that's a massive change in terms of how quickly we're getting new features and how we're able to then adjust to you know, what developers need and, and be able to deploy applications the way that they want to. So it's, it's a really you know, good way of doing things and it's proving to be very successful. Yeah. Java is just is, is in the woodwork um, and we can't take it for granted, but it's always there like XML and other things that, you know, when they first were introduced, wow, outstanding and they're great and they are still important and great, but they're, they don't get a lot of the high visibility that a lot of other applications do, but you know, it's, it's successful for a reason and it's because it is a relatively low level protocol that just touches and affects everything. How would you summarize the value of Java to the IT business right now? Just a quick summary. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the reason that Java is still so successful and people are still using Java in, this, in the way that they, they used to is because of the Java virtual machine. That's the real kind of key piece in terms of Java. The language is, is obviously great and people love it, but it's the Java virtual machine and the fact that you can compile other languages like Scala, like Kotlin to byte codes and run them there. And what people have found, and I've seen this a lot through my career, is that people start up a, a new company, they have a great idea and they go, oh, we'll use the latest, uh, you know, fad in terms of development and we'll then, you know, develop our, our application that way. And what they then find is that that application becomes very successful and suddenly they need to scale up and, and the platform they're using, you know, something like Ruby on Rails or um, I don't know, JavaScript or, or something like that. And it just doesn't scale up to what they need to be able to do for massive deployments. And that's where Java wins. So it has this massive scalability. It has the ability to deliver port performance, you know, especially when you look at things like what we're doing with Zing, um, so that you can then run these huge applications where you've got literally millions or tens of millions of users on that platform. And that, I think, is really what's kept Java at the, the sharp edge of deployments for these types of applications. Yeah, that's right. Scalability and the Java machine, a virtual machine, those are the key things. I guess my last question would be about open source. The first big story that I broke with eWeek in 2006 was the open sourcing of Java at Java 1 that year. And what, what impact has um, open sourcing, you know, the, the whole Java environment done for, for the actual uh, environment itself? What is it? What is it done? Has it, 
help rocket it to higher you know, echelons or what? I think it's two things. I think the first thing is that it's helped in terms of enabling lots more people from lots more organizations to contribute to this. So it, it's not just the fact that Sun was developing it. It's not just the fact that Oracle are now developing it. So you don't have one company that has total um, responsibility and control for the platform. You've got lots of other people like Red Hat, IBM, Azul, all sorts of different people are contributing to the project. So that, that's kind of one side of it. But I think the other thing that's really important is and we've seen this more recently over the last couple of years, is by being open source, it means that you're not tied to one provider of the distribution of that. So you can take your binaries from Oracle, you can take your binaries from Azul, you can take your binaries from other people. And it does give you a choice and you can say, well, you know, which is the best distribution for me as a user? You know, if I'm interested in cost, well, yeah, great Azul, provide a lower cost alternative. If I'm interested in high performance, great as all provide a higher performance alternative to that and you've got other you know alternatives that you can look at across the whole industry and that is really important for people to have that choice great and it's uh, is it azul.com or .org or what is it azul.com dot com yes, great our website so more information if anybody needs it go to the site and check it out appreciate it simon ritter thank you very much for being our guest on eSpeaks. thank you very much for having me I enjoyed going back in time and thinking about my <laughs> early days 25 years ago in IT. Whenever it comes to Java and Sun, I always, the memories come back. <laughs> thank you very much. And for everybody following along with us uh, to this point, thank you very much for joining us and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.